how my enemies increase. There are so many who attack me, so many who talk about me, saying, There is no help for him in God. Selah. But you, Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, and the one who lifts up my head. In full voice, I cry to Yahweh, and he answers me from his holy mountain. Selah. I can lie down and sleep. I can wake again because Yahweh sustains me. I do not fear the arrows that fly against me on every side. Rise up, Yahweh. Save me, my God. Oh, that you would strike my enemies on the jaw, that you would break the teeth of the wicked. Oh, Yahweh, salvation. Oh, Yahweh, on your people, blessing. Selah. David knew a thing or two about facing down opposition. When he had been a young man, he'd been entrusted with the, with the care of the flocks of sheep that belonged to his family, and part of that job was protecting them from predators, chasing away the animals that would have stolen and eaten their sheep, basically just using a big stick and a, sort of a military-grade slingshot that apparently David used enough to get quite good at using it. As a man, as an adult, he grew into a military leader. He was a soldier and the, the leader of soldiers and the commander of soldiers. And he fought in battles against the people who came against the people of Yahweh God, the people of Israel. David understood how to fight enemies. But the situation that inspired the writing of Psalm 3 was something new. This was something quite different. It was complicated and it was coming at him from all directions. It was coming from beneath him, rising until he didn't even know it was there until suddenly it was in front of him. It came from within his family, within his inner circle of leadership and advisors. Some of David's troubles in this season were really sort of his own fault. He had, uh, he had made some bad decisions that had come back to bite him. And some of the troubles that he was having were not his fault. Other people were making bad decisions, and those were biting David as well. For example, uh, Absalom is the first one who comes to mind. David's son, who is at the center of the situation. Absalom, I think, had a legitimate complaint against David. He had really genuinely been treated badly. He had seen D David handling his family situation really poorly and th the hurt that that left in the hearts of innocent people. Absalom felt that David was unjust and just couldn't do the job anymore. Another one who comes to mind is Ahithophel. Ahithophel was one of David's inner circle of advisors, one of David's right-hand team. But Ahithophel seems to have just wanted to back a winner, and he thought Absalom looked like a good bet, so he betrayed David and walked away. Another person who falls into the category of enemies here is a man named Mephibosheth. And I may stumble over that name. If I do, please just forgive me. Um, Mephibosheth is someone who David went out of his way to be kind to, to be generous to. The scripture says that Mephibosheth ate at David's table. But Though Mephibosheth accepted David's kindness, <clears throat> when David was going down, suddenly 
Mephibosheth reveals this depth of bitterness and enviousness and resentment for her having been the recipient of what he saw as charity. And he just sat back and gloated and basically just said, yeah, you're getting what you deserve. Another person who uh, was an enemy of David in this time was named Shimei. He was a relative of Mephibosheth. And um, he had the same reasons for being angry at David, but he took this op opportunity to literally throw stones at David. He followed him down the road as he was running for his life, throwing handfuls of dirt and calling David names. It was just an opportunity to humiliate someone who he was mad at. And the final person who might fall into the category of enemies here is a group of people that the Jewish scriptures simply call the men of Israel. This is just a number of citizens who had uh, either been uninformed or misinformed or just didn't bother to ask what was going on. They just went on with their lives and they didn't care. So like I say, this is a complicated situation. There are political nuances. There are personalities at play. There are interpersonal and interfamily histories going back several generations. This situation with David's enemies was complicated. Now, I personally have never owned a sword. I have never tried to hit anything with a military grade slingshot. I have never fought a bear or a giant or an invading army. I find that the enemies that David faces who inspired the writing of these verses in Psalm 3 are far more similar to the kinds of enemies that I might deal with in my life. Situations where, you know, the woman at work thinks that she can do my job better than I can. Or um, a neighbor is mad about how I trim my hedge. So he mutters about me to the other neighbors. Those kinds of opponents, those kinds of enemies, are more the kinds of things that I will encounter in my life. But the thing that I want to get to here, the thing that I think is the most crucial for us to connect with, is this. These enemies of David's are similar to the kinds of enemies that I might have. But if I am honest with myself, if I am brutally Holy Spirit honest with myself, I also have to say that these enemies of David's are the kinds of enemies that I am most capable of being. I can be Absalom. I can turn a, a legitimate hurt, a real disillusionment and disappointment into poison. And I can use that as an excuse to undermine and work against someone who I should be forgiving. I can be Ahithophel. I can be distracted by something that's new and shiny. And I can just sort of start wandering away from the promises that I have made and going after something that is more appealing or glamorous or exciting. I can be Mephibosheth. I can wrap myself in bitterness. I can gloat from a distance when someone who I think has wronged me fails. I can sit back and say, see, I knew that he'd get 
his just desserts. I knew he'd get what's coming to him. Now everybody will see that I was right. I can be Shimei with his nasty names and rocks to throw, posting hilarious memes online that poke fun at someone who has let me down. Memes that say, ah, what a loser. And mocking in order to justify my own sin of grudge holding. I can be one of those everyday citizens, one of those men of Israel, sailing along on my quiet waters, on the surface, never looking underneath, never asking how my peace came to be purchased, and not really caring as long as nothing gets in my way. I can be one of these enemies. The value of art sometimes is that it holds up a mirror to ourselves. It gives us new light in which to see ourselves, to look deep within. Take a moment now. Take a Selah moment and look in your heart, look in your mind, run your mind back over the last week and ask yourself, ask God, is there someone whose enemy I am becoming? Am I allowing my resentment, my envy, my bitterness, my covetousness, my disappointment. Am I allowing any of that to turn my heart into poison and to become an enemy? Oh Lord, teach us. Teach us to not be an enemy.
it's from